来自李继浩。I'm so glad the winner came back just for a couple days because uh, my summer body wasn't ready. Anybody? <laughs> as soon as he got hot, I said, oh shit, it's too soon. What the fuck? I'm supposed to be prepared. I know it's bad uh, for me because uh, I like cleaning the house naked. I don't know about y'all, but if you buy property and you clean it naked, it's the most relaxing shit to do. I love sitting on shit I bought butt ass naked. I don't know why the fuck. It's something about mopping the floors and my balls dangling. It just makes my home to be great. And uh, I was, I got upset to the downstairs, and uh, I was naked, and I know I'm out of shape because as I ran down the stairs, I heard my booty clap. It was the most. I'm <laughs> gonna hear your booty clap as a man, especially a black man. What the fuck? I gotta change my Tinder profile to thick bitch. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> you think I stopped working out? Then hell no, hell no, to work out. I just walk down them stairs slow and controlled, like no. Right? <laughs> Never again. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I, I'm, I'm doing comedy, uh, and I've been doing comedy for quite some time, and I'm supposed to be famous as fuck. I'm supposed to be rich and famous. But just like everybody in here, I have made mistakes in my life. Come on. Anybody showed up to an interview smelling like weed? Uh -huh. <laughs> Said some real shit at the Christmas party? Come on, somebody here. Your wife looking thick than a motherfucker. Is that a real ass? You know what I mean? Just, for me, one of my uh, claims to not fame was they had a 106 in Park interview here in Chicago, audition here, if anybody remember, a lot of years ago when they first picked Terrence and all that. And it was 2,000 people, and I was in the last 10. Out of 2,000, I outperformed everybody, had a nice outfit. I was like, hey, 106 in Park, uh, doing all the shit, laughing and shit, doing all the jokes. I was killing the shit to the point where we had five more people left, and I was so full of myself. I don't want to stand next to the other losers. You know what I mean? You know how we all contested, but I was like, you know what? Y'all sit over there. The next round is definitely mine. Y'all saw what I did. Y'all saw what I did. The next round, final round, was a teleprompter test. I don't know about y'all. All right? I'm the kid in class. <laughs> that when it's my turn to read, I pre-read my, my paragraph to make sure. <laughs> I was straight, you know what I mean? Like I, I pre-read, I, I can read, I'm definitely a reader. I read all the time. But this time, I was acting out in comedy and reading words, get this everybody, that fucking moved. <laughs> so the final round, I come out, I'm all ready, I'm like, oh, I'm confident, all right. So it's 106 in part. I could not put my words with my actions. <laughs> so I'm like, welcome to 106 in part. <laughs> it's going down today. <laughs> we have the best <laughs> the rappers out. The best. I, I just fucking take. I'm just I'm just saying I'm not supposed to be a comic. I'm saying that because that wasn't my dream as a child. Alright? Everybody had childhood dreams and we failed. <laughs> I was supposed to be a motherfucking ninja. Come on, anybody. <laughs> I'm supposed to be an Asian assassin. I'm supposed to be in a tree, in the shadows with my sword waiting to slit her throat and flip out of there. That's... I want to be a ninja so bad because my, my neighborhood was gang infested. A lot of gangs, they got beat up, beat the fuck up one day. And I said, that's it. That's fucking it. I'm going to be a ninja. I don't know about y'all, I got brothers. All right? And for us, every time we watch Samurai Sunday Karate, we, we kick the shit out of each other for hours. <laughs> And nothing like ninja training with your mind. I was a big brother, so me and my little, little, my little brother was my apprentice. So he always got kicked the most. <laughs> Cause I was the, you know, I was the ninja master and I had to let him know you gotta always be prepared. You know, the shit out of I was trying to learn uh, jujitsu. I just figured it out, that's what I wanted to do. I heard it before, I watched a couple of samurai movies. That was my karate, all right? It's pain mastering. I used to do all kind of pain mastering shit. Like hold a lighter under my hand and see how long I can do it. Anybody? My brother thought I was a master. I mean, I'm... <laughs> 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 he's like, damn. <laughs> I get like three pencils and, and I, I tell him to hold them real loose and I look this way, then I break them like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> but every time it was his turn, I was always sabotaging him. Like with the lighter, I hold it real close. He's like, ah, ah. You are not ready. 
When the pencils are holding real tight, it hurts his head. You are not prepared for life. You are not focused. So since I was a master in doing cold shit, he trusted me to do anything. I said, hey, it's our final day of training, all right? I think you're ready to take a daily roundhouse kick to the throat. <laughs> and you should close your eyes and stick your neck out like this. You know, a little brother do anything to pet the but he's like, like this, or like, no, like this. <laughs> Soon as he closed his eyes, I focused on his neck, and I said, look, if you move and fuck yourself up, who fault is it? It's your fault for moving. Because I'm a master. <laughs> so I got all the strength I had to pull the kick. Ah, ah, stepped on his neck, did the Bruce Lee hold him ah. <laughs> he cried, he cried. My grandma come in there like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, she gonna get the belt, she tried to whoop me and shit. I was there like, yeah! Yeah! Ah, oh, he is a master! Damn! He took that whoop and like, that was a riding master, look! Yeah! Took that shit. I thought I was ready for the streets after that. I went outside and I was like walking like a ninja. I was all ready. I saw them guys that jumped me, right? But it was like, it was around 4th of July time. So I said, you know what a ninja need? Smoke balls. So I had my smoke balls and I went to go pick a fight. Because I had trained all this time. You know, at the while, the shit was getting to me. After I broke a couple pencils, I broke four one time. I was like, damn! So I was ready. I took that ass whooping, I was ready. So I get my little smoke balls. And I go to talk shit, like, hey, remember that shit y'all said that I like smoke balls? And I rolled them towards them and I ran off into an ass whooping. I won't forget that. <laughs> the fuck out of me. Who knew smoke balls working? I thought smoke would fill the room. The smoke just was smoking right there. And I was getting an ass whooping right here. They beat the fuck out of me with the smoke ball background. <laughs> that was my last day being a ninja right there. I was done with that shit. I was supposed to jump into the smoke, flip out of there. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. It was like this. Ah, 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 ee, ee. <laughs> yeah, I'm ghetto. I'm ghetto as fuck. You know what I mean? And, and you can't even really date me unless you got a little ghetto in you. Because I like ghetto shit. Like, uh, I was in a relationship, right, with a woman for a long time. And she got real comfortable, and she was like, you know, I love you, but I want you to know I really don't like sucking dick. <laughs> that was dick respectful. How dare you? <laughs> so I'm out trying to, you know, cheat, and uh... <laughs> you know what I mean about the cheat, because they always start on bashing women a little bit, you know, uh, he build, build myself up. The hard work of overtime, saving my money, give my credit, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> a woman's supposed to suck a man's dick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> women in relationships, y'all don't know, lonely women at the club hate a lazy girlfriend. If you got a man, and you ain't treating him right, oh, she at the club, eating it up. Oh, lazy bitch ain't sucking dick. If I had a man, I'd suck your dick every day. Word, word, true, that's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what a woman's supposed to do. So I'm, at, at, <laughs> I'm out at work and shit, and uh, I get a call randomly a couple weeks later. I say, hey, I was thinking about what you said. For some reason, I've been thinking about sucking your dick all day. <laughs> my, my, my dick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What time are you going to work? Now, motherfucker, fuck this job. <laughs> I'm thinking the break room <laughs> in the sink just... <laughs> I get to the house and say one got the best setup. Y'all know, y'all single in here. They got the most pillows on their bed, they big, small, different sizes, all these colors and shit. They got a big, big screen TV with an old PlayStation on it. <laughs> you know, if somebody act right, they come over and hang out with me. I can play 2K or whatever. <laughs> and then you go in the room, their, their room, they got slogans on the wall. That's just new shit now. And now, now women got these, you know, believe in yourself, powerful people. Uh, you need some dicks, all kind of. <laughs> so I'm at her house and uh, I'm sitting on the bed, anxious, and uh, she walked over and by her, her drawer, her bed, she had a drawer. And in this drawer, I, I call it committed to being a good woman. It's all kind of dick sucking paraphernalia in there. Lubes and flavors and a chin rest. I don't know if you ever seen the chin rest. It's a C shaped thing, like it got a 
and neck grip, and she put it right here for back neck muscles. It was, she put out a pack of pop rocks. And I'ma say it like this. I don't give a fuck how bad your day was going. I don't give a fuck if your cousin got killed that day. I don't give a fuck if you got fired from your job. If you got shot, nothing will turn your day around like a woman walking towards your dick with her mouth crackling. I'm sitting up there, anxious as hell, she's I'm like, couldn't breathe and shit. She put my dick in her mouth. It felt like I stuck my dick in a warm 7-Up. It was strong, it was bubbling, it was popping. She started hooking me up. And she doing her thing. And, you know, and all I could think about was the sounds. It was disrespectful. It was like, <laughs> I was concerned, like, you all right? She I put my hands up because I didn't want no fingerprints on the head just in case. She committed big suicide. I told her, don't try to keep it on you. Do you know what I think? All I could think about was the sugar absorption in my penis because I'm old now. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna have dick diabetes fucking around. I'm gonna have dick diabetes. I don't want no damn dick diabetes. Hey, but thank y'all for laughing. I'll meet you all. Peace out.